Hi, I'm Lessa Bouchard, and I am here at, at, with Nancy Crowley, and this is Talk Art, uh, sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you. And uh, Nancy is a, uh, a, a painter and an artist who's lived in uh, Santa Clara Valley for how long? 50 years. Half a century. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you mentioned something um, I thought that was very interesting about your uh, the history of your home and studio. Can you tell us about that? Yes. My husband and I built our home 47 years ago in Los Altos Hills, and the designer was a student of Frank Lloyd Wright's. Sam Bruce Richards designed it, and we built it, and we've been there ever since and just love this area. It's beautiful. <sighs> That's great. So uh, you have your Bachelor's of Art from us. San Diego State University. Wonderful. That was, um, you know, many years ago, and it was just so wonderful to be born and raised one mile from a campus that um, I graduated from. I, I was able to walk to school from kindergarten all the way through the completion of my undergraduate degree, and it was a time when I was open to art. It was marvelous that I was in a very fundamental school. They taught uh, the classics of art. And it was a great background because it was so disciplined. And I think that then later you can take that discipline and that fundamental background and take it in your own course and do what you want to with it and have your own voice. So I was very fortunate to have that background. How old were you when you first knew you wanted to be an artist? I can remember that. I, I, I really can. It was, it was crazy. I was five years old, and I was, in the, I was in the first grade, and I remember my teacher putting a beautiful white piece of paper down in front of me with math equations, and I looked at them and thought, oh, look at that beautiful white paper all the way around, so I'll just do some drawings on that, and uh, forgot the math completely. And realized that um, not only was I not going to be just trying to be an artist, but I was an artist from that time on. I thought everybody knew what they wanted to be when they were five years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then you ended up getting your Bachelor's of Art in Painting. And what was the emphasis, you said, in, in classical painting? Yes, it was. And uh, on the other hand, I studied many disciplines there, oil painting, printmaking, life drawing, um, watercolor, and really just got so involved in especially painting and drawing the figure. So that was at the time, late 50s, early 60s, when the Bay Area figurative groups were really having some fun up here in the Bay Area and, and uh, attacking the figure and uh, on canvas and understanding what it was like to break up space with the figure in the space, landscape, interiors, it, they were so exciting to see. So that was a group started by David Park and Richard Diebenkorn, um, Elmer Bischoff, Joan Brown, and many others. And so I was excited at that time to follow what they were doing. By the time I graduated from um, San Diego State University, I was really concentrating on the figure. So then um, from there, you went on to postgraduate studies. Yes, yes. At, after I graduated from San Diego State, I married my husband, and we took right off the, and moved to Phoenix, Arizona, where I registered at Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona, and started my work, my graduate work there. Again, emphasis on the figure, but also getting outside plein air painting for the first time and enjoying that brilliant light of the Southwest. Worked there for a while, and my husband had a terrific job offer, so off we went to back to California, and this time in the LA area where I registered at UCLA for graduate work. Wow. And so were there any particular influences there that were special experiences for I, you? I had such a, yes. I had such a wonderful experience there. It happened to be the semester when I first started and I was accepted into the art program at UCLA that Elmer Bischoff decided to be a visiting professor. Oh. And it, it, it was magical. Yeah. I had my own 
small painting studio down in the bowels of the art department at UCLA. And every afternoon, Elmer would stop by and we'd talk about the figure in the format, composition, colors, value. It was magical. It was just great. And then another job offer from my husband, and we moved from there to the Bay Area, where I registered again for graduate work at San Jose State University. And that was another, it's just a great art department. And it took two years to finish my master's there. It's, it was um, the completion of a long journey, but on the other hand, it was just the beginning of my exploring on my own, my own song and art. Okay. So um, what was the focus of your, the body of work in your graduate work? It was mainly the figure, uh -huh. and um, I, I was just so excited by it that um, I wanted to paint in oils, very large oils at the time, and that's what I finished my graduate work in. So like, so like these? Yes. The, the, you still do some work like this? A lot of work like this, very large mm -hmm. format, and because I was born and raised in San Diego, near the Mexican border with all those saturated colors, they still stay in my soul, and you can see that I'm a colorist, and yes, I, I paint very large canvases, um, always have, but on the other hand, do get out to paint plain air. My husband and I travel a lot. We've traveled the world, and we had uh, just a great opportunity to sail, see the world, and any place that I'd go, I would pull out the paints and paint with water-based paints, but these are the kinds of oil paintings that I do in my studio. Great. Well, I think we have some images of um, some of your oil, the bigger oil paintings that we can take a look at. So if you can talk a little bit about these. Yes, this one, I, quite often I will take photographs, my own photographs of a subject matter, and then work at home in my studio from them. And these were two young women who were on a, a ferry going from San Juan Island to Seattle. Um, they, what I loved about it was the stark contrast, the values, and their shadows. Also, the diagonals of the legs and everything going right up into the center, keeping your eye in the center where all the activity is. Just darling young women. Okay. <laughs> so let's, I think we can look at, there are a few others that are in this mm -hmm. style. Sure. Let's see. Okay. Well, so, oh, there's one. Okay. This is another large oil. It's um, one in the Caribbean. I took several photos of my son on a windsurfer. He was waiting for the wind. And um, it's, it's just a very stillness, but also it shows the breakup of space again of one-third to two-thirds. It has a lot of value contrast in it. So I, it's um, these puzzles that I like to solve as far as color, value, and composition. Absolutely. That's a, a striking image. So let's keep, um, let's see. I think there's another. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, a restaurant in Silicon Valley commissioned me to do many paintings for their large space. And this was one of them, one of our favorite waiters, Marco. Um, Again, very strong composition. That's what I love. That's what I love to do. It's quite mathematical. Two-thirds and one-third breakup of space and using colors to not only recede some of the lighter ones that usually go in the background, but using bright colors in the back to come forward, a flat surface. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that the, the composition is very, uh, the, the figures are incredibly striking you know they really pop out Good. at you strong hopefully yeah. yeah and it was a large restaurant so these large canvases work well there absolutely okay oh oh <laughs> this is a bag lady of los altos and yes she was in los altos for a while and she would she was quite a character when i saw her coming at me i had my camera at that time a point and click <laughs> um got several shots of her on her bike, but to me that shadow was just, just came to life. Yeah. So, and the brilliant colors again, 
My color's close to the sun. Just the energy up from her is remarkable. Good. Yeah. Another one? Oh, this one came from a dream, I, and which I really haven't pursued that often when I, when I have a dream and figures come through it. This was a set of sisters, very close. Um, I liked the feeling that I had about the composition again and all of the diagonals that lead up and into it, and the patterning. Lots of fun to use some patterns and, and more color and breakup of, of color values. Mm -hmm. Great. So let's see another one. These are all oils, and most of them are quite large. This one is actually a 48 by 48 canvas. We were traveling, as we do, we love to. This is South Africa, and we were visiting a Zulu camp. These two women were strong beautiful women and they were shamans and doctors in their community you could just feel the power of them and and yet the kindness and help that they projected to their people so um, I, I like that archway behind because it framed the woman who was the main doctor wonderful is there another oh. we snorkel a lot <laughs> we're sailors and we're always traveling and chartering boats all over the world, and we've seen a lot of fish. We've done a lot of snorkeling. This one came toward me, this fish, very slowly, as if it was going to speak to me, and I, I, it just mesmerized me, so I had to paint it later and divided it up, the space around the fish, into three segments so that it's suspended in air and water, and um, played around with a lot of the aquatic feeling and, and the bright colors again of the Caribbean. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh the last one is another, another large oil that I did for the Line and Compass restaurant in, um, in Santa Clara, and these are the largest that I paint. Wow. Big canvas. Okay. So these are the big, so that's, that series is, mm -hmm. you know, really exploring the large format oils so, like these yes. and then now but you also talked about how um, you were very influenced by the figure figurative movement yes. and we did see a lot of figures in in all of those not exclusively but mm -hmm. and, and so we I think we have another series of yes of more Good. of those and um, <laughs> So if we could take a look at the, the, some of the figurative pieces. And as, as you're talking about this, if you can relate your figurative work to the artists that influenced you. Right. Well, many artists have influenced me. And one of the major ones is Matisse. But also Duran, Lamech, um, Gauguin, of course, Van Gogh. Um, Milton Avery, just so many colorists, oh. and also T.C. Cannon, who's a Native American who was a Vietnam vet and died when he was very young. But he it was a terrific artist in the Southwest, brilliant colors as I use. But now we're looking at my work, which is gouache, and gouache is a water-based paint. Uh, it's, um, it's a very saturated, highly color saturated paint, just a beautiful pigment. You can almost eat it. It's so <laughs> wonderful. But I can take it with me when I travel. And I also use 300 pound hot press paper, which is a really sturdy, high rag content paper that's flat. It doesn't have a texture to it, which I love, that I can determine where I want the water to go and the pigment to go. This is a um, typical painting of a figure that I use just flooding my brush with a lot of paint and water and starting to paint. I don't draw. Quite often I don't draw at all. And I just start painting. And so this is a model. I also like to be able to have some happy accidents. You can see the green shoulder. Oh. It's wet into wet, and that wasn't planned. But to me, it's delightful. It's magical. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. It really does kind of, it becomes the, works like light. Mm. The spilling of the paint feels like the spilling of light. Good. That's very right. interesting. This painting is a gouache painting. She, I, 
I decided to do a few of the lines first, a few drawing lines in oil pastel, and then apply the gouache on top. And it's so much fun because the oil pastel resists the gouache, and so you have bright colored lines coming through or a pattern on a top, as she has, and then the brilliant colors of the gouache. Wow. Okay, we'll take a look at the next one. Okay, so the next. Oh. This was the same idea. You can see the yellow line on the left of his lapel and green lines here and there and orange and blue, but just a few lines. Then I come over with very, very saturated gouache paint. And up, up in the top right hand corner, I also sprinkled some salt, which after drying provides terrific kind of a marbly glaze feeling to it, texture. Yeah, beautiful texture. Piece. In this gouache painting, I did not use any drawing at all and didn't use any oil pastel. I just load up my brush with paint and start painting. And in this case, I never draw. I just start painting. This is, these were two figures, actually a still life, uh, not a still life, a um, self-portrait of me on the left and a good friend on the right. And the photograph that I took of us, that a friend actually took of us, I loved it because it was a circle in the middle and it just kept revolving around and around. The composition sold itself but also lots of fun work with um, different values of color. The shadows again. You yes. have a, a lot of great shadows shadow work. Shadows come to life for me. I love shadows. They have their own personality. Great. Okay, next one. This it was another live model, just beginning to paint with no underdrawing at all. Lots of fun, spontaneity. I love that. Yeah, great movement. Good. Good. Next one, please. A dancer and a diagonals come alive to me. You you can manipulate by using diagonals to make sure that a person who's viewing your painting is staying in the center, staying where you want that person to stay. Uh, it's interesting that the eye, the way that you're directing the eye, feels mm -hmm. uh, really follows the energy of the movement. It's that's, that's uh, yeah. important. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Next one, please. No oil pastel here, no drawing, um, a family cat, just a lot of great colored paint that, I, again, gouache, I can't recommend it more highly to anybody who's working in watercolor because you can trust the color. When it's wet, it's dark if you want a really deep dark, and when that sh shape dries, it stays the integrity, the deepness, of the value and with transparent watercolors you don't get that. So uh, this is a good time I think to talk about your your technique with some of these Great. pieces that you've brought. This is one that is also a oil pastel at the beginning just a few lines here and here changing out the color pink for the flesh but green and blue different different shades of oil pastel. This is what they look like they oh. children's Crayons, children's colors. So fun to quickly do a line drawing and then come over with my trusty flat brush. I never use a round head brush. If I lose this brush, I'm in deep trouble. It's been with me for 30 years. Wow. <laughs> you know what, uh, what? What is it made out of? I have no idea, but it, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's not synthetic. I can uh -huh. tell you that. So then coming over with gouache paint for the background or all the other the areas of large shapes. And the oil resists. Lots of fun. That's great. And here's another one that I'll put up with the same approach. That's oil pastel. And this time, in the sleeve, you can see it's white. Well, that actually is paraffin uh, from a candle. And so I was drawing white on white, not really seeing what I was doing. You can't see it until you bring in the shapes of of gouache paint, and then it pop, pop, pops. So it's a, really this back and forth between working intuitively, and, but with this incredible precision in composition and Thank you. form. Breakup of space is extremely important. 
it's quite mathematical and uh, that's it's a lot of fun to work this way great and you have one more here. the last one is a a landscape and no no oil pastel used here just starting right in painting with my trusty brush um, but you can see again the breakup of space which I'm always talking about composition very strong you know a quarter here a quarter here more of the uh, space where I want you to stay within the center this was George O'Keefe's mountain right behind her ghost ranch in uh, southwest north of Santa Fe New Mexico Wow! so that light the light is very important there yeah. mm. Georgia can't have that country anymore. It's partially mine. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun painting her. Okay, so so this is how you pa you paint on location with these kinds of I paints. I do, yes. And and you, so you have quite a landscape series. So I let's do. take a look at the landscape series that you have. Maybe you can talk a little oh, bit more about that. Yes, and it turns out that when I tear a huge sheet of 300-pound hot press paper into fours, just <laughs> then, then it's exactly the size of the bottom of my suitcase. Perfect. So, <laughs> these are all about 11 by 14. And this one is gouache, no oil pastel. Again, Georgia O'Keeffe's Ghost Ranch, north of Santa Fe, New Mexico, in the afternoon light. Yes, Next one, please. My husband and I travel a lot. I think I've mentioned that. We just travel so much. And this happens to be Malaga, Spain. This was last year, last fall. And we were in um, Picasso territory where he was raised. This is Picasso Park in Malaga, sitting at a table at a cafe, having a glass of wine, and <laughs> having fun doing a, um, a gouache painting first with oil pastels and then coming in with gouache those trees, the branches, and the light, you really get the sense of... Well, Spain is just like San Diego as far as lighting. It's just beautiful lighting. Oh, very cool. Southern California in general. Italy, no oil pastel here, just loaded up with gouache. And uh, most towns in Umbria, they're on a, you know, little pointed hills. And at the very top, there's either a castle or a church little little town and the diagonal of the pathway leading up to it just caught my eye um, the dark windows and doors very important to set off the lighter town around it yeah they they really draw the eye as you were saying that Good. composition and the movement of the your eye mm -hmm. follows that um, very Umbria is beautiful Malta same kind of thing sitting on a boat and painting the town in the late afternoon sun with a lot of sun bleaching the town out, but with um, variations in the water. Great. This time I used a, an approach, the same approach of oil pastel first. Um, this was the southern part of Corsica and uh, divided that canvas again into proportions that I felt were balancing the different, I would say, uh, values, different values of paint. Great. Okay, next one. Actually, that said um, it was in Ireland, but it was Corsica. Cool. This is Ghost Ranch, again, back in, in Georgia's territory, but with my back at the other cliffs and looking out at what she called her mountain. She owned this mountain, her Pedernal. <laughs> I didn't use oil pastels here. It was uh, the sun going down behind the mountain and lots of fun to paint very quickly. Okay, come mm -hmm. on, next one. Great. And I think this might be the last one. This is um, the grapevine going back and forth up and down California. My husband and I do that a lot to visit family. Oil pastel, quick watercolor with gouache, a lot of fun. Oh, wonderful. They all have such uh, a great rhythm and sense of that freedom and the mm. spontaneity, concerned with shadow, light, all of those things you. that you talked about. Good. Thank you. Good. I mean, it's been uh, just a, a pleasure talking to you about all of 
all of your life experience and your uh, bodies of work, how long have you been participating in Silicon Valley Open Studios? Oh, it's just been so wonderful. This year was my 25th year. Wow. It's just been a great, great time I've had every year opening my studio for two days to the public. And people come in, they flood in, and I get to demonstrate, I get to talk to them about the process and really show them what or share with them what an artist does and but this year was special and last year because my 18 year old granddaughter Emma Crowley shared my studio space with me she's a wonderful ceramicist and what a gift that was we really had a good time oh wonderful so open well, studios is marvelous oh thank you so much for for sharing that with us and I really hope that I get to um, Come and visit you at your studio again. It was such, it's, it's a remarkable atmosphere. Anytime. And Leslie. how many works did you say you have? Thousands. <laughs> uh, Great. You live long enough. <laughs> and, wonderful. you know, you paint enough. Yes. Great. Well, it, you know, please, I am really looking forward to the, that opportunity. It has been lovely to have you here um, on Talk Art. This has been Nancy Crowley, and I'm Leslie Bouchard. And Thank you so much for joining us on Talk Art. Thank you.